So I recently watched Netflix movie Stolen, if you are interested in that kind of stuff, it offers a fascinating look into a really esoteric subject, but I would not recommend it as fiction, because it gets rather dull in the end. Before we start just let you know this video contains spoilers. Elsa, a young Norwegian girl, aspires to continue her family's reindeer herding tradition. In the film, the opening scene showcases Elsa's father taking on the role of a teacher as he instructs her on the art of taming a magnificent white reindeer. This enchanting creature is given the name Nastigalu, adding an element of intrigue and wonder to the story. Within the idyllic world that Elsa inhabits, where she finds solace and joy in the company of her loyal reindeer companions, a dark and unsettling phenomenon is unfolding. In the vast expanse of land, where different herders tend to their reindeer, strange events have been happening. These incidents involve the sudden and unexplained disappearance, as well as the tragic demise, of numerous reindeer. One fateful day, as Elsa was making her way home from school, she found herself an unexpected witness to a shocking event. It was none other than Robert, a man whose actions would forever be etched in her memory. In a heart-wrenching scene, Elsa watched as Robert mercilessly took the life of his reindeer, a creature known as Nastigalu. In this particular scenario, the man becomes aware of Elsa's presence and proceeds to caution her regarding the potential consequences of disclosing the information she has witnessed. He explicitly states that if she were to reveal the details to anyone, she would become the next individual he intends to harm. In the given scenario, Elsa's brother finds himself suspecting Robert as the potential culprit. However, when he confronts Elsa about this matter, she chooses to remain silent, possibly due to a sense of fear or intimidation caused by an underlying threat. Upon visiting the police station Elsa is informed of a rather disconcerting revelation. Robert, the individual responsible for the untimely demise of the calf, has powerful police links. Therefore, it can be observed that Elsa, in this particular situation, opts to remain silent, consequently, the law enforcement officers find themselves in a predicament where they are compelled to classify the occurrence as a theft. This classification is primarily attributed to the absence of substantial evidence that could potentially support an alternative interpretation of the events. In the span of a decade, it is disheartening to note that Robert has continued his unlawful pursuit of reindeer solely for the purpose of sport. The fact that he typically records these horrific activities with a partner is much worse. Meanwhile, Elsa has embarked on a new professional journey by accepting a position at the nearby school. This decision marks a significant deviation from her childhood aspiration of following in her father's footsteps as a reindeer herder. Given her unshakable passion, Elsa was forced to seek teaching. This decision was not entirely of her own volition, however, as her father adamantly believed that herding was a profession reserved exclusively for men. Despite her deep desire to engage in the traditionally male-dominated field of herding, Elsa was forced to acquiesce to her father's wishes and redirect her ambitions towards the realm of education. In the story, Matches, Nils Johan's reindeer heir, the protagonist, Matches, is faced with a crucial decision. Instead of following in his predecessor's footsteps and inheriting the reindeer, Matches has a different vision for his future. This unexpected twist in the narrative introduces an element of suspense and intrigue, leaving views eager to discover what Matches' alternative plans entail. In pursuit of a more lucrative source of income, he expresses his desire to seek employment in the mines, as he believes that herding does not offer a promising future. Leaving the Sami community to work in the mines, however, carries the consequence of being disowned. This decision, while potentially providing economic opportunities, comes at a great cost to one's social and cultural identity. On that awful day, Matches and Elsa found themselves embarking on a mysterious journey. Intrigued by a trail of blood, they were compelled to follow it, their curiosity peaked. As they ventured further, their hearts pounding with anticipation, they stumbled upon a humble shed, tucked away from prying eyes. They promptly decided to contact the authorities, seeking their expertise to unravel the enigma that lay before them. Robert is the rightful owner of the shed, but detectives cannot get inside his barn without a warrant. In his statement Robert says something controversial. He thinks the Sami are being dishonest by murdering their own reindeer and then trying to get government compensation for it. 
This accusation raises important questions about the integrity and motives of the Sami community, as well as the efficacy of the government's compensation system. Such a claim, if true, would not only cast doubt on the ethical practices of the Sami people, but also highlight potential flaws in the government's ability to accurately assess and distribute compensation. This charge is based purely on Robert's assertion and lacks evidence, thus it should be treated with skepticism. Without more evidence, it is premature to draw conclusions about Sami behavior and intentions. One of the central themes in the given statement is the sense of responsibility and guilt that Elsa feels towards the actions of Robert. Elsa firmly believes that if she had spoken the truth a decade ago, Robert would not have had the opportunity to harm numerous reindeer. This belief is further reinforced by the fact that Robert has not been arrested again, leading Elsa to blame herself for the consequences that have unfolded. That Elsa's silence in the past caused the current circumstance implies that she now feels guilt and self-blame. In a pivotal moment during a council meeting, Elsa courageously raises the issue of the reindeer murders. However, much to her dismay, her attempt to shed light on this grave matter ultimately results in an unexpected and unfavorable outcome. One of the prevailing desires among non-Sami individuals is for the government to establish factories in the region. The primary objective behind this proposition is to generate employment opportunities and foster economic growth for the local population. By constructing factories, it is believed that the region can experience a surge in job creation and the subsequent benefits that come with it. One potential consequence of this situation is that it could pose a significant threat to the livelihoods of reindeer herders, such as Nils Johan and others who are currently facing various challenges. One of the reasons why certain individuals hold resentment towards the Sami people is due to their belief that the Sami hinder the progress and advancement of others. Robert is enraged. In an attempt to draw attention to his frustration, he takes it upon himself to gather a collection of reindeer skulls and stack them prominently on the side of the road. This unconventional display serves as a powerful statement, capturing the attention of all who pass by. Recent debates suggest the Sami are murdering their own reindeer again. As a means of seeking compensation. This claim has gained traction among certain individuals and has sparked a renewed debate surrounding the actions of the Sami community. To fully grasp this subject, it is vital to consider all the perspectives and evidence. In a surprising turn of events, Elsa, a prominent figure, has made a statement to the media regarding the ongoing conflict between the Sami people and the non-Sami individuals. According to Elsa, the situation may not be as straightforward as it seems. She suggests that it is the non-Sami people who are responsible for the killings of their reindeer and that these acts of violence are driven by a deep-seated hatred towards the Sami community. This revelation challenges the prevailing narrative and raises important questions about the motives behind these heinous acts. The public is unhappy with this comment, thus Elsa will not be allowed to attend any further meetings. When someone, probably Robert, sets fire to all of the reindeer herders' feed, things start to go downhill. Elsa's attention is drawn to the sight of Robert carefully placing lifeless reindeer bodies into the bed of his truck. This unexpected and somewhat disturbing scene captures her curiosity and prompts her to observe the situation more closely. One notable action she takes is recording the incident on video, with the intention of using it as evidence to present to the authorities at a later time. When Robert becomes aware of the situation, he promptly makes his way to Elsa's residence and proceeds to discharge his firearm in order to create a sense of fear and urgency. In a state of fear and panic, Elsa seeks refuge in the safety of the cellar, desperately attempting to shield herself from the impending danger. Realizing the gravity of the situation, she reaches out to the authorities by dialing 911, hoping for their swift intervention. However, fate intervenes before the arrival of the police, as Robert, the source of Elsa's distress, discovers her hiding place and proceeds to issue menacing threats, further intensifying the already precarious circumstances. In this particular instance, the individual in question expresses a desire for the woman to cease her bothersome behavior towards him. Furthermore, he warns her against speaking ill of him. To emphasize the seriousness of his warning, he makes a chilling reference to a past event where he allegedly committed a violent act. 
he compares cutting someone his throat to a decade-old incident involving Nastigalu. Once again, Fortune smiles upon Robert as he skillfully eludes capture. In the narrative, Elsa comes to the realization that she is solely responsible for her own fate and must proactively make decisions and take initiative. With a firm determination, she embarks on a mission to ensure that he faces the consequences of his deeds. In a world where fairness and righteousness are paramount, she takes it upon herself to seek retribution and restore balance. By choosing to bring Robert to justice, in this scenario, the individual in question is breaking into a barn with a specific purpose in mind. Upon entering the room, she is met with a chilling sight. The space is filled with the lifeless bodies of numerous reindeer, their carcasses strewn across the room in a haunting display. From freezers to walls, the room is a macabre showcase of death and decay. Regrettably, it turns out that Robert has taken the precaution of installing cameras in the room, which promptly notify him of Elsa's presence. In this thrilling sequence, we witness Robert's relentless pursuit of Elsa as he chases her through the icy terrain. However, tragedy strikes when his snowmobile tragically collides with the unforgiving frozen lake. This unexpected turn of events adds a sense of danger and suspense to the story. In this tragic turn of events, Elsa valiantly attempts to rescue him from his perilous predicament by employing a rope. However, despite her valiant efforts, her attempts prove futile as he tragically succumbs to the depths of the water, succumbing to a watery grave. In response to the overwhelming amount of physical and video evidence, the authorities have been alerted and subsequently initiated a comprehensive investigation into the activities of Robert. The shocking truth is unveiled, exposing the fact that he has been systematically eliminating reindeer for more than 10 years. Robert's friends are arrested as well. The town trusts Elsa again.